gotta say, the Olympic team nailed in the coffin. Welcome back to my channel, sports fans. Okay, let's get into this. Yes, sir. The 2024 men's Olympic basketball team exposed as frauds, right? They got exposed as frauds. So let's look at this. You know, it, 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 I don't really know what angle to come at this. So I really don't have any other choice but to come at it from this angle. And they had to live up to expectations that the media brought to us, right? The media brought us these expectations. So we expected them to live up to it, right? What were the expectations? That they were the greatest team ever assembled. They could beat the dream team. So if the dream team was the bar, that means, well, they're saying they were better than the dream team. So if the dream team was the bar, guess what? They were better than the 96 team. And they were better than what would that be? The 2000 dream team. And they would be better than the 08 redeem team. Right? <laughs> so let's see man so what the media started doing they start laying this foundation for these guys right they start making up all these excuses right against their great competition or the competition that the united states in 92 men's olympic team didn't have to play against that was that was the foundation that was the excuse and they put these guys in the weakest group pool, right? They put all the good teams in group A and let them beat the crap out of each other. Let the second best teams put them in group B, let them beat the crap out of each other. And then the second, or the third worst, or the third best, whatever you want to say, was in group C. And that's where they put the United States in the third best group, which was the worst, really. Serbia, South Sudan, Puerto Rico, and the United States found their found their way into that group for some reason. I, so, basically, we saw Victor Wimbenyama crying after the game. Well, wouldn't you be crying if you had to take the hardest route and play all the best teams to the gold medal round? while the United States had to take the easiest route and play one good team. And let's look at their one good team that they played because this is France. This was their best competition, the United States' best competition in this whole thing, right? Their best competition. And we'll look at a couple of these guys. The guy that dunked on LeBron James, right? Because we're told that they got all these NBA players in these Olympic Games, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The guy that dunked on LeBron James um, played for the Celtics for two years, and that's it. He was out the league. Another one, a present player, he plays for the Wizards. No accolades. The one that dunked on LeBron James, no accolades neither. Another one. Play for the Knicks, uh, 2017 to 21. Um, play for the Mavs last year. And I think he's playing for the Hornets. I think in the, the D League or G League, whatever it is. Nobody never heard this guy. He has no accolades neither. When I say accolades, I'm talking about no all-star games, no block titles, no nothing. Nobody never heard of these people. And that's basically how the rest of them are on the team except for Victor Wimbenyama, who was a rookie, um, defensive first team, rookie of the year, um, all-NBA rookie team, and he led the lead, league in blocks. You have Rudy Gobert, three-time All-Star. He was on the second team all-NBA one time. He was on the third team three times. Defensive player of the year four times. Insane. Um. Defensive first team seven times and rebound leader and blocks leader.
Let me ask you a question. Where was Rudy Gobert and where was Rudy Gobert in the game? Can somebody explain to me where the hell was Rudy Gobert? I didn't see him. Where was he at? Did he show up? This is four-time <laughs> defensive player of the year. Let me tell you what's going on right here. Rudy Gobert is a guy who gets all these rebounds with nobody under the cup once the shot is let, up, let off. And basically all the centers in this era, right? Because all the guys are at the three-point line. Second of all, this guy has never averaged three blocks in a season. That's insane. You would have to get four blocks a season as a center just to be considered a defensive player of the year candidate as far as a center in the 90s and probably the 80s too. This guy couldn't even get you three blocks in any season since he's been in the league. And he's got not only defensive first team, but he's got four defensive players of the year. Imagine that. <laughs> and he's a blocks leader. He was a blocks leader without getting three blocks a game. That would just be unheard of back in the 80s and 90s. A blocks leader in a defensive player of the year and never averaged three blocks in a season per game. <laughs> I mean, it just it just exposes not him, the whole entire NBA. It just exposes it. It shows you how bad the defense really is in this era. Victor Wimbenyama. This guy was a rookie. And who knows what, what he's going to do. Look, I, I really don't know what he's going to be able to do. It is the... Lee going to play to his strengths or what? Is he just going to... Because this is a three-point shooting error. That's all these guys do. So what's going to be his strengths in a three-point shooting error? Where you're running up and down the court this fast, running and gunning. How long is this guy going to last? Right? He looked very confused in the Olympics. Um, they took him in and out the game in the first half. They had... This guy sitting on a bench so much in the first half. I was just, it was mind blowing. But yet LeBron, Curry, and Durant, who are 35 and older, are playing more minutes than Victor Wimbenyama. Next, they wasn't playing through him. They wasn't playing through him. And this is a big thing. With this type of era, they don't like to play through their guys. They like to play swing, 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 swing the ball around. So is he. Is he just going to be a three-point shooter? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I, I just don't know. I mean, real coaches would just throw the ball down to him and let him dominate. There's no real centers to stop him. Rudy Gobert is that? That's who's going to stop him. So look, <laughs> they struggle. The United States struggle to beat these guys. Struggle. Nine superstars and nine future Hall of Famers struggle to beat this team. And not because they're not way better than France. But what did we tell you a minute ago? It's because of defense. These guys are not lockdown defenders. Even if you're not lockdown defenders... The effort really ain't there. Like the 80s and 90s. Let me explain it to you. Do you see the way Drew Holiday plays defense? Do you see the way Bam plays defense? Do you see the way AD plays defense? I can't really give you any more names on this team. This is how the dream team plays defense, like those guys. And especially like Drew Holiday. If the dream team would have played this team, <laughs> Victor Wimbenyama 
as little and frail as he is, he would have been flying out of balance. Once Patrick Ewing went at him, once David Robinson, a, a bodybuilder, went at him, Carl Malone, Charles Barkley, though not tall as Rudy Gobert, would have drove on this guy so hard. I mean, this guy walks like he's got like two left feet. How is this guy even in the NBA? I just don't get it. He's so slow footed. And this is a, a, a defensive player. <laughs> Look, man. They would be lucky not to get beat by 30 by the dream team. They would be lucky. You look at Kevin Durant. You look at Steph Curry. You look at LeBron James. You look at Anthony Edwards. You look at Tatum. You look at Durant. Only one of these guys have made an all defensive team ever in their career. And that was LeBron James. And the last one was 2015. That's not good. And when we talk about it, it's not like they're competing with high level guys. To make that defensive team. If you didn't make the defensive team in the 80s and 90s. It wasn't some no-name dude on the defensive team that took that spot. Didn't we talk about this the other day? We went over the defensive teams, and it was basically a joke. So on 2020, right, 2020, when we look at this, the defensive first and second team, you got Rudy Gobert, Giannis, Anthony Davis, Marcus Smart, and Ben Simmons. Now, let me tell you what. Marcus Smart and Ben Simmons ain't making a defensive first team in the 80s and 90s. There's no way. The second team, Brooke Lopez, Kawhi Leonard, Bam, Patrick Beverly, and Eric Bledsoe. Patrick Beverly, Eric Bledsoe, and Brooke Lopez ain't making no defensive team back in the 80s and 90s. When you look over here at 1990, and we'll, we'll, we'll even go to the matter of fact, let's let's we'll just look over here real quick and then we'll go to what 92 and 2024. Over here on 1990, Joe Dumars, um, Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, Dennis Robin, and Buck Williams on that first team. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. These are the greatest defenders of all time. I mean, you, you could put Dennis Robin on that Olympic team if you wanted to. And you, you, you probably could have put Joe Dumars too. So these are two-way players. Joe Dumars, um, Michael Jordan, Hakeem. Th these are two-way players. And in the second team, you had uh, Rick Mahorn, Derek Harper, Kevin McHale, Alvin Robertson, and David Robertson. Now, to me, the two-way players for me are, are Kevin McHale and David Robertson. Now, all-time great defenders of all time. I mean, Kevin McHale, Alvin Robertson, and, and David Roberts. Uh, let me see if I can find this. 20. So 1992. And they got the same guys on here just about. Joe Dumars, Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, Dennis Rodman, and Scottie Pippen. That's who was on the first. <laughs> that's who was on the first team. Let's look at 2024. It just went by. Not too shabby. Um, Bam was on that team. Anthony Davis, Rudy Gobert, uh, Herb Jones, and Victor Wimbenyama. The second team was Alex Caruso, Drew Holiday, Jaden McDaniels, Jalen Suggs, and Derek White. For the second team, for 92, it was Patrick Ewing, Buck Williams, Michael Williams, Larry Nance, and John Stockton. I'm just saying, man. 
we're we, we just going to shut you down on defense. The United States will win. 92 Dream Team will beat this team by, by 20 to 30 points. Serbia, 20 to 30 points. So when you see this image that's going to pop up on the screen, it's got the Dream Team face nine NBA players in the Olympics. The 2024 team will face 61 players. Right? So let's take out, out the equation, right? <sighs> and they didn't even get to face <laughs> these players like Greek Freak, Luca. Um, they face Wimbin Yama and Joker. So that's four right there. Th those are your four superstars. And then, am I missing one? And you can throw in uh, Rudy Gobert. So, out of 61, those are the five. Either all-stars, one is an all-star, and one, I mean, four, the other four is superstars, right? So, the rest of those guys... which will be, what, 50, 56? The rest of those guys that they're playing, 10-day contract guys, guys that's playing season to season, um, guys that came up from the G League or D League, whatever it's called, because somebody got hurt, dudes that's riding the bench. Dudes who never made an all-star team ever. Dudes have no accolades. And former players... A lot of them just got off the couch and went to go play for their hometown, their home, what, what their home country. So outside of those five that we talked about, which is Victor Wimbledon, a rookie, Rudy Gobert, slow-footed, never averaged three blocks a game, gets all his rebounds with nobody in the paint to battle. Um, who else? Luca, Greek Freak, and Joker. Outside of those five guys. This is what these guys faced. When I say the, the rest of the opponents, 10 day contract, never all stars, year to year, riding the bench. And, and a lot of these guys just got up and played for their country in these Olympics. That was took one year off, two years off, five years off. This is the competition that the United States faced. So, in fact, they only faced two superstars. One of them was a rookie. And the other one, Joker, well, he, he had an all-star teammate, too. Let's don't leave that out. A slow-footed. <laughs> it, it, it's just mind-blowing that we even got to talk about this. Joker with no help and barely beat this team. So, basically, they already knew, man. The media already knew what time it was. They already knew this team wasn't as good as the dream team. Not even the second dream team. Not even the third. Not even the 08 redeem team. They already knew what time it was. They knew, they knew, they knew. Now, I don't think they were going to lose. And I didn't think that they thought they were going to lose. But what the media already knew by laying the foundation of giving you all these uh, weak international players that played in the NBA that have no chance to ever make the 80s and 90s, and I'll tell you in a minute why. They already knew this because they already knew that this team could not live up to expectations of the Dream Team. So when it will be close, you will say, well, damn, the media said this team is better than the Dream Team. So uh, what do you guys expect? <laughs> well, we expect you not to be an idiot and go look at these players that they're recognizing as a threat to the United States and go look at what the, what they did in the NBA, how long they've been in the NBA, what, what was their value in the NBA, all this stuff. We expect you to go look at that because to me, to me, if we go back and look at the nine players that the United States faced, they ain't too far off 
then the superstars I I I done named or the five that I put out there, right? The Victor Wimbenyama, the Rudy Gobert, um, the Luca, the Giannis, and the Joker. Which I don't think Joker and Luca would make the NBA back in the day. I just don't think they would. Oh, or Rudy Gobert. But to me, like I was telling you guys before, the NBA didn't take scrubs. We didn't take international scrubs because our American players were the best coming into the NBA. They were the best coming out of high school and going into college. Right? When you look at college, it's full of international players. Why? I don't know why. I guess they don't accept Americans no more or Americans, you know, don't want to play this and that. I've heard this whole fundamental thing, right? That Americans aren't fundamentally sound, ain't this and that. No, I, I, I think it's just fake, just like they do. I'm not even going to get into that, but we don't know that game. They start putting this Euro game into the United States and we didn't recognize it. Sitting at the three-point line, four guys shooting from the perimeter and one guy in the middle. We never recognized no game like that. Until when? About 210. American basketball was always high percentage, playing from the paint, inside out. Why did we have to start playing their game? We went over there and, and, and smashed their heads in. That was our game. So what I'm trying to say is a lot of international players try to come to the NBA in the 80s and 90s. But guess what? We could only take the best international players because we was playing our game and they weren't good at playing our game, which is inside out. Which is a man's game. When I say, when I say inside out, I mean. Positional skills at every position everybody played a position forward small forward power forward shooting guard point guard and you had center so every position had a skill you had to have a certain skill at that position the euro ball was four guys sit at the three-point line is positionless and one guy in the middle So even when our college kids played them with our style of American basketball, they would get dominated. Because if you play American ball against Euro ball, it's not going to work. Because American ball is used to playing defense. Which means you guys get confused a lot when we're talking about, you know, who's going to win between the 96 Bulls in the 16 um, Warriors. We're not. <laughs> play your style of ball. We're going to play ours. We don't have to play your style of ball. The problem is. How are you going to get these three point shots off? Because you got to have a pick and roll. Pick and pop. All these screens to get this off. In the 90s. Has some of the greatest defenders of all time. When you look how the 2020s is played. It's played like keep away, right? These guys cannot, for the most part, get their own shots. And when you see a guy drive to the basket, what happens? It'll be four guys at the three-point line. One guy at the uh, three-point line starts to drive on his defender. And then for some dumb reason, I don't know why, one of the three-point defenders comes off of his guy to help on the um, guy that's driving. And now he leaves the three-point guy open. And now the guy that's driving, he's got to make a decision. Do I keep driving or do I kick it to the open three-point guy? If he throws it to the open three-point guy, now the open three-point guy says, I got a decision to make because now I got a defender coming at me that came off of my teammate. Now my teammate is open at the three-point line. Am I going to shoot it or am I going to pass it to the open three-point guy? And it just goes on and on. In the 90s, this would never work because when that guy starts to drive, Ain't nobody going to come and help. The guy that's defending, the guy that's driving, he'll be able to hold his own. Just how it is. 
we're sending some of our greatest defenders, some of our greatest two-way players of all time to basically go over there and destroy France, <laughs> Serbia, Puerto Rico, all these guys. We're sending two-way players. You know what? The, the, uh, that's what the, we're doing for the Dream Team. What they're sending over with this team, the 2024 team, you're sending one-way players. That's all you're sending. You're sending one-way players. So what I'm trying to tell you is many girls try to get in the league or international players back in the day try to get in the league. And some did, but they were the best of the best because our American players were so good. John Stockton was an international player. Hakeem Olajuwon, international player. Patrick Ewing, international player. Steve Nash, he was an he. You guys forget about him. He was an international player that started in the nineties. Um, there's probably some more that I, I I can't remember. I'm talking about great ones. So if you was an international player, you had to be damn at Hall of Fame level. You just couldn't come over here and ride no bench type of <laughs> international player like that. You had to be you had to be good. I'm not trying. Well, the, I would say the major a lot of them was. Hall of Fame, All Star. Um, if you got on the roster, you was on the roster for years. You wasn't just coming into the league for one one day contracts, one year contracts, coming up from the G League, all this bull crap like that. You was on the roster for years. I think Bill Whittington and what Luke Longley. I think he came. They came from um, Luke Longley came from Australia. So he was on that Bulls team for like three years, right? He could shoot the mid-range. He could step out and shoot. He was a big body that could def uh, defend the paint. You know. <laughs> Matt, this guy would be defensive player of the year in this era. <laughs> if Rudy Gobert, wow, come on now. He just can't make this up, man. And you got to remember, if the, if the Dream Team had to play who, who do the United States play? Serbia, South, du South Sudan, Puerto Rico, S Serbia twice, Brazil. <sighs> There's nothing even. What are we talking about? France, every time the United States would have stepped on that court, their opponents would have pooped their pants. Oh, that's Michael Jordan. That's Carl Malone. That's Charles Barkley. That's Akeem, uh, not, not Akeem, <laughs> that's Patrick Ewing, that's David Robinson, that's John Stockton, that's Scottie Pippen. Man, these dudes would have been freaking out. And why? Because they know these guys are the greatest players in NBA history at their positions at a high level on offense and defense. So they won't be stepping on the court thinking, oh, okay, okay, my, Michael Jordan going to shoot on me, but, but you know, he's going to slack off of me. No. And the same thing with all of them, Scottie Pippen, John Stockton. I mean, the, the, the names you got backing each other up is just sickening. Clyde Drexler is backing up Michael Jordan? <laughs> Carl Malone is backing up uh, Charles Barkley? David Robinson backing up you. I mean, this is it's nuts when you think about it. John Stockton backing up Magic Johnson. I mean, what are we talking about? We, we shouldn't even be talking about this. We shouldn't even be talking about this. These All these teams will get destroyed inside out. Remember what we talked about. We talked about why the world caught up to these guys. Because we decided to play their basketball. Because we no longer wanted to play. You can see it in 2004. Um, Olympics, 2006 FIBA. We wanted to play from the perimeter. We didn't want to play with our backs to the basket. And that's fine. But you better be great shooters. In 06 FIBA and 04 Olympic team were not really great shooters. But they, they don't want to learn no positional skills on the box. <laughs> they didn't want to learn no pick and rolls. A lot of these guys just want to sit out there and shoot. And take guys off the dribble back then, they really didn't want to be great shooters. And you know, the Euros always played that style of basketball. Shoot, 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 shoot. So they were always 
great shooters. They weren't great paint players, but they was always great shooters. Um, so eventually the NBA just ushered in the Euro style of ball. Try to blame it on Curry, but we talked about this. Curry didn't change the game. Curry and Clay was out there. Wasn't, wasn't Curry by himself. It was Curry and Clay out there, and it wasn't the whole Golden State team, four guys sitting at the three-point line. If we want to say somebody did that, that was LeBron James. Remember his first stint in Cleveland? Everybody was at the three-point line, so he can take a run and start from the three-point line and barrel his way into the basket, which he still does that. He ain't got no game. Um, it's the fakest game you've ever seen. For 21 seasons, everybody's been jump shooters, lights out, silky smooth, and this guy's barrel into the basket. That's his game. Um, so they pretty much made the NBA around him. Everybody else has to sit at the perimeter and shoot while he just barrels to the basket. Which one is it? Is it that the 80s and 90s guys can't shoot like these guys? Or is LeBron the greatest of all time? Because they're, they're trying to convince you that this is the greatest shooting era of all time, but your face of the league can't shoot. Can't shoot free throws, can't shoot the three, can't shoot the two, can't shoot the mid-range. <laughs> well, what are we talking about? Well, when you got media, I, I love this media because they wake up every day and they say, the NBA media, they say, you know, the talk shows and the debate shows, they say, man, these NBA fans are idiots. We can tell these guys anything and they will believe it. We'll tell them with a straight face. And because we say a lot of big words and we sound intelligent, they'll believe us. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got the, the most idiotic people today. That at one point you would be like, you would you would have thought that the people that's hearing this, this generation would have pushed back and say, man, this shit, this don't make any sense what you guys are saying. <laughs> oh, goodness. But remember. This generation, they listen to robot music. How smart or intelligent are you ever going to be if you listen to robot music with the same continuous beat? Tick, 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 tick. And the people ain't even singing or rapping or whatever like that. Right? It's just a machine. So, look, man. It, it, it was just another lie. So LeBron could get another award now he got the, the MVP. He's going to go for the in-season tournament. Like, man, this guy, what do you want, bro? Okay, you're number one. So the standard now as being the greatest of all time is dunks and layups, four and six in the finals, um, getting finals MVPs that you don't deserve, getting championships that you had to have on super teams, jumping team to team, getting other teams number one franchise players, flopping around, never developing an overall game because you can't shoot free throws. You've never been uh, known as a mid-range shooter, never been known as a three-point shooter. I mean, it, the list just goes on and on. The most turnovers, the most um, field goal misses. What do you want, dude? How You want some more awards and um, what do you call it, accolades to say you're better than Michael Jordan? Two statistical titles in 21 seasons. So you want all this stuff to say, now you are the bar. And when we look at the bar that you done set throughout your career, <laughs> it's just fine. Then the NBA continues to suck. And the standard will be the worst standard of all time. Uh, especially when we look at this carrying and traveling. You can't even take this era serious. Go watch some 80s and 90s basketball and watch how many times they call these guys um, for carrying and traveling. I'm not trying to say all the time, but I'm just saying... They will call it if they feel that they're doing it. These guys travel and carry all the time and the rest don't even call it. Because if they upheld that standard, you will see how unprofessional, how fake this era really is. These guys really don't have them kind of skills. And it's been okay. So the fan base will now say, oh, yeah, man, it's okay. It's carrying and travel is just, you know, one of them things. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm going to get off of here, man. But, you know, the, the, the dream team would have stomped out all this competition the 99% of this competition is just competition. Uh, international players in this era who wouldn't even make the 80s and 90s. They, they won't make it. They won't make it in the league, so...